So we're going for round two on this. Yeah, line. we had the most amazing conversation. <laughs> It was great, it was. and you didn't get to hear it because <laughs> yes, we forgot. Sound was off. Yeah, we forgot to turn the microphone on. So it's really too bad you all missed that. Yeah, it was really bad. <laughs> so, but do over. Oh man. Yeah. Take two. Right. Exactly. So we just got done with a group coaching call. Yep. And and so we had this is a question that comes up a lot, and it came up in the group coaching call. It comes up with with us with um with lessons and clinics and everything. And one of the questions we hear a lot about is, is this the right horse for me? People buy a horse and they wonder if it's the right horse for them. Um, they might have like second, they might have like second guesses about, about the horse and if the horse is, see if I can get, there we go. Um, so anyway, they wonder if it's the right horse for them. And you know, it's, it's funny because just like everything else with horses, the answer is it depends. It really depends, and it really depends on on us. It does and so here's the first thing: are you are you willing to to learn? Are you willing to first of all observe? Yeah, because so much of the objectively. Time, oh, yeah. Oh yeah. True. Yeah, because there can be a, it's hard when they have an attachment with a with an animal or within your right. own self. And that's a really good point because I do hear people say that a lot. They'll say, "Well, I love this horse." Yeah. And, I, and then I'll ask, "Okay." So are you willing to take the time that it takes to work on yourself? And and then are you willing to take the time that it takes to work with your horse? And can you remove yeah. deadlines? Yeah, so important. So if it's a horse show, maybe you can't get there. That's hard yeah. for people. Or if it's a trail ride and your friends are all going and you go every year with them and it's an annual trail ride, maybe it's not the horse for you yes. to go, right? So you have to be willing to, to do things like that. but. First of all, observation, and so expanding yeah. your power of observation because so much of the time people aren't even noticing what their horse is saying. Right. And what's shaping up around them. Right. So. Yeah, your horse has an opinion on the subject. Right. And your horse can give you a ton of feedback as to where you need to improve and, right. and be better in the relationship. Exactly. And, and, you know, it might be you need to bring more confidence to the table. Or it might be something... That you're insignificant to your horse. Yeah. That your horse just doesn't really think that much of you because yeah. maybe we're boring. Yeah. Or, or maybe we're just not that interesting compared to his friends. And so we're just not that important at, at, for, for your horse. So your horse doesn't key in on us and give us their attention and give us their awareness. Right. Or maybe you're coming to the relationship and you want X, Y, and Z... But your horse actually wants, nah, right. I don't know, A, B, and C. Yeah. <laughs> it wants something completely different <laughs> yeah. than what you and, want. Right. And But then what you can do is in order to get what you need, sometimes you have to give a little. And right. you, need to, you need to find out what things are your, is your horse interested in and bring those into his environment and use those to experiment and explore and add new learning experiences. And then from there, you can launch those and redirect them and take them to where you want to be going right observe remember compare yeah and and things can shape up and so now what about working on ourselves away from the horse so balance flexibility strength yeah. these are things that we can do on our own easily right and so easily people always say I'll, I'll say um oh your back is a bit hollow you know right now our position your back is a bit hollow yeah my back it, it's a little weaker well it's like well let's work on that strengthen your back but do some work off of the horse or maybe a rider has a hard time getting their leg under them because their hips are are tight right and they need to work on stretching right um very easy to do something you can do off of the horse right uh yeah but riding is very very much a physical a right. activity it's a sport and you need to view it as such and cross training is super important and that goes you know when you're training it incorporates flexibility right. balance skill coordination reflexes like all of these things and you need to do it through cross training you need to do it through bringing in other activities into your own life so then you can show up to the table with your horse and you can bring those things into into that and actually be confident because most yeah. of the time it's a lack of confidence and we always talk about the horse being insecure but what about the human mm -hmm. most people aren't that confident when they're with their horse right and well work on some something off of the horse hiking cycling 
Yeah. Go 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 rock climb indoor rock climbing. I, yeah. uh, go you know do some things at the gym you're not you're not comfortable with. If you know that you need like some work with your coordination. Yeah. Work on it away from the horse. Learn to juggle. <laughs> yeah, learn to I don't yeah learn to juggle. You know that's something that can be done. But yeah, work on it because the time to work on your confidence is not with a horse that's nervous or with a yeah. horse that's young or insecure, because then it isn't the right horse at least in the moment. So right. go work on yourself away from the horse. Do some things that'll make you more confident. Get out of your element. Yep. I mean, if somebody is nervous about people, go talk to people. Go do some speaking. Right. Be able to deal with it when you're nervous. Deal with that. Arrange your butterflies. But yeah. you can practice all of this away from the horse. And then something really important is ride a horse that knows what you would like to do. So if you have a horse that's off the track and it bucks at the canter or something funny like that, don't learn to canter on that horse. Yeah. Because you, it's not going to work out very well in the poor horse. But go ahead and ride a, a school horse. Go ride a horse that lopes. Yeah. You know, and almost anybody could sit a horse that lopes. And, and learn the canter on a proper horse so you learn the feel of a movement. Yeah. Because that is priceless when you know what a movement yes. should feel like. Yeah. Yeah, and feel, feel is so important because when you're working with and riding horses, it is primarily a feel thing. The conversation, the flow, the just the way you work with your horse, it's all this, yeah. this feel. And when you're riding, there is still all the aspects of theory, of understanding, of the mechanics. Like there's so many pieces to the puzzle that aren't feel, but you can't be learning those on the horse. You need right. to you need to separate that piece out and you need to like in the fair, you need to be watching the videos, taking notes, writing things down, making yourself aware so that you have this larger toolbox. You've got instead of just a hammer to fix every problem, yeah. you've got a wide array of tools that you right. can bring to the table and it makes it so much easier than that when you're with your horse to be able to ride through feel because you're not having to think about everything all the time because you've already done your homework in that department. So that's another piece where you can work on yourself exactly away from the horse. Yeah, and I, I do kind of think about that with people that so much of the time they're working with their horse and they're so analytical. Did I do this right? Did my did, Was that what you wanted? Was my horse, was that enough? Was that good? Did I did I let the horse settle up? They ask all these questions. Am I holding, holding the rope right? When you're doing that, you're in analytical mode. You're not in feel mode. Horses feel their way through a situation. So when you're backing, you yeah. need to feel when, when, when it comes through and they understand. And, and so something like the fair and other videos that we're doing, when you're at home or on your phone or away from your horse, also another thing to do on your own, then work on the philosophy, work on the understanding of that and maybe a little plan a little game plan yep. and and you can do this away from the horse so when you're with your horse you can give him what he needs in the moment yeah yeah um, and support what you want to have happen through feel so right uh, that that's these are all things we can do away from the horse right when we then you know are with our horse when we come back yeah well now obtainable goals that we can reach that set, set it up for success, work on things that your horse will walk away from and you'll walk away from and saying that was successful, that was great. And you feel, you leave the barn driving home, you're feeling good. When you go to catch your horse the next time, maybe they'll come catch you. So you, that you're, you're both feeling like a winner and these experiences build, 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 build. Positive experiences, a uh, hundred positive experiences, maybe you felt you're doing something little you know, but you had a hundred of these experiences that adds up to be something real. A couple times yeah. with your horse spooking or, or being nervous with you or whatever, think about what that does when you're, when you're not right. there to support what you want to have happen. Right. So don't go in over your head with your horse. Right. I just wanted to say hi to, to Bridget. Oh, hi. Who's from Green Bay. <laughs> oh, and we've got Humboldt, Saskatchewan. Excellent. Hey, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... Hope the weather's nice up there too. It's nice down here now. Yeah, right um, now we're right. We're above freezing, which is right. lovely. <laughs> so over time, we'll build on these experiences and see where you're at with that horse then. And and maybe you find the horse works out for you because you took away these pressures. You took away the time. You took away the peer pressure. You you took away yeah. um, this deadline 
of having to, I've got to get this done, and all of a sudden you're back to, hey, I'm, I'm doing well with my horse. Right. Yeah. Now you don't even have that question. Exactly. Because it's clear that you and your horse are a good fit. Right. So now, what about, I'm sorry. No. What no about more. indicators that <laughs> it's not the right horse for you? Yeah. And that's a decision we make. Yep. And that can be a hard one. Right. But it can be something that we we are actually making the better decision not only for ourselves, but for our horses. Right. Because sometimes we aren't bringing to the table mm -hmm. what our horse needs. Right. And if you cannot give your horse what he needs, he's not going to be able to give you what he needs, whether that be time, confidence, um, right. skill. I right. mean, there, there's, there's a lot of pieces that are part of that puzzle. And that's that's okay. It's your responsibility to find your horse a good home, right? And to make sure that he continues to have a good home. I'm a firm believer in that. But you need to also be able to give yourself permission. And I think people are looking for that sometimes. They want to have permission to know that it's okay that their horse and themselves are not a good fit. A good fit. And and, and a great indicator of this is you feel like you just plain and simple don't have enough time for your horse. Yeah. For that particular horse. It, it just It's too much preparation. It takes so much ground school before you mount. By the time you mount, you don't have enough time. Or that say you, um, you're very goal orientated and this horse, some days you can't do what you thought you wanted to work on. And so you feel like you're kind of, you just don't have enough time to obtain your goals with mm -hmm. that, with that horse. That is something that is, is very common. Right. Um, people that show horses, they can, that's easier for them to let go of a horse because they can say, well, I want to be at this level, but this horse is at this level. And, and then they move up. And it's easy. It's easier for them because they've they've got this indicator that says physically this horse maybe isn't what they um, right. Yeah, or maybe the horse is really hot and they want to go to summer shows and this and the trainer just you know so all of a sudden the trainer says this horse is maybe too much for you. They make up their mind. Right. For those of us that don't show, we don't have that pressure, but we still have time because we only have so much of it. Right. So. The, another indicator mm -hmm. would be is that horse just not maybe sound enough for what you want to do. Yeah. It, it, and, and so maybe you want to do a lot of trail riding, but that horse can you know can't handle that or what whatever. And mm -hmm. and so then that would be an indicator. And you'd say you know it'd be probably be better to find somebody that's that's more suited for for this horse you know physically. Right. right. So yeah, maybe you find somebody that's an amazing um, person at body work, and they just love to spend time on the ground and. And you know, work through the horse's pain points, help with fascia release, those sorts of mm -hmm. things. There are people that absolutely love that. That would would take such good care of a horse that had these you know physical limitations that maybe weren't suited to you and your riding discipline of choice or riding style of choice. So there's there's a lot of opportunities that um, that can come about for the horse right. what, when and if you make a decision that the horse is not the correct fit for you. Right, and then I think the last indicator, at least that comes to mind for me, is if you have this very elevated level of anxiety. Now, oh. I have a lot of people oh. that are anxious. Actually, I mean, most people are anxious. And even when people say they're not anxious, they are. I mean, I am, Yeah. you know, yeah. right? Yeah. But I have to try to bring it together to try to arrange, you know, arrange my butterflies and get everything in the right place. And now can I get this done? Yeah. So if you have this super high level of anxiety with this horse, you know, all the time and you don't with other horses, that's a good indicator. Yeah. So now you need to come up with a plan. You can make it work, but maybe you decide it's more time than I'm willing to spend or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, or maybe I'm too nervous for this horse. My horse would be better off with somebody that's not so nervous. Right. So that is something you have to figure out. Now, if you're nervous around all horses, if, if you say, well, I have anxiety cantering this horse, but you have anxiety cantering lesson horses, and maybe it's you. Right. And, may, and maybe, you know, that, that's not a good indicator then. But Right. Um, and, yeah. and then maybe you don't necessarily work on those things right. with the horse that you have, but right. maybe you go and you take lessons yeah, and, you, and you work on things and the, the whole off the horse thing. Right. You know, just get out of your comfort zone everywhere in life and learn how to... How to have right. little successes for yourself where you get uncomfortable, it's a tough situation, but you're able to work through it and you start to feel okay. Yeah. Like and, and build that confidence yep, up. Yep. Yeah, definitely. If you if you're super insecure and your horse is super insecure, well, start yeah. with yourself on that one and Yeah. Yeah. And go from there. It can be done. Hello from Ireland. And, and if you're high if you're willing <laughs> to spend the time, I mean I can help people 
if they're willing to spend the time. But it, it, they say that people say they are. Right. But now get it done and, and do right. it. Right. And do it. Right. So I Which hope. Is, and horses feel that. Right. You know, they. They do. They do. And they also feel when you're incongruent. They're really no. aware when you are trying to be stoic and like not nervous and pretending on the you're outside. not nervous on the outside, but on the inside you're just like the, this wreck. And that does not work out very well at all. No, not, not at all. They, it, obviously, and everybody says a horse knows when you're nervous, and, and it's not just yeah. physical, right? Yeah. They pick up on all that. So. And then you're not trustworthy. If, yeah. you, if you're pretending to be one thing right. when you're really something else. And the horses pick up on that, too. Right. And we have a great presentation in the next upcoming fair from Jane Pike that – gets into this and she does a beautiful job of explaining it. I can't wait till you get to see that presentation because it's, it's a good one. It's good. It's, it's super. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, maybe we want to talk about our, our new course and how that ties into. Yeah. So we're, we're trying to, what we're finding through the fair is um, there's a lot of content and it's all really great, valuable content from a variety of people. And I think it's so nice to be hearing things different ways because you never know when it's going to click. But I think it also helps to have kind of a cohesive strategy and plan as you're, as you're going through, right. like a blueprint, so that you're able to progress in a way that's that's logical and, and kind of works. So we're we're trying to organize the content now in more of a way where it's got to flow from the groundwork through um, the connecting work with your horse right. through some of the you know even like the hoof care and and. Um, Physical body work. Environmental, and, right. Yep, environmental work stuff. Um, so that you've got this plan throughout as you're riding and, and you know, from groundwork to horse care and then riding and then taking right. it up to the next level and on further. And Yeah, trying to tie it together because how much of the time, you know, you hear people say, well, my my trainer says to do this and, and this is different. But when you really break it down, is it different? Is, is, the, is the outcome the same? Might be. Yeah. We all want softness and we want a horse that's responsive. We want a horse that feels for us and looks to us, right? Yep. And and so, yes, although there's maybe some different approaches and styles, figure out what, what works, but but be able to realize that, wow, this is more similar than I thought. Yeah, yeah. And I then, think there gets to be such a division right. in the horse world. Yeah, there is. Where, you know, I ride dressage or I, I do western or I yeah. ride quarter horses, I ride right. warm bloods. You know, there's, there's these divisions that end up being put out there when in reality when you're talking about good horsemen and women that really yes. care about the horse there are far more similarities than differences, the differences. and you're going to find that they're going to explain things in ways that are different yet really complement one another if you're willing to listen and and open up and see what they have to say and All i right. think that's the really exciting piece about the fair yeah definitely is, and instead of it being this just overwhelming all this information at your fingertips, but where do you go? We would like to try to like channel and direct, organize, organize things for you to have a bit of a plan because I, I really want you to be able to apply all of this all this information to your horse. Yeah, yeah. You know, to you and to your horse. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so it's really good. And yeah. speaking of plans too, so we've got a couple of our presenters that have. Um, courses coming up and I'll be letting you know more about them via email when I get more information. Right. But and speaking of confidence. The, yeah, Barbara Schulte yeah, has right. a confidence course coming up that is going to be pretty amazing. It sounds impressive. So I can't wait to share that with you uh, when she gets me the details. So you can watch for that. And in your who inbox. wouldn't want to be more confident? Right. I mean, if, I think if, that goes, if you say oh, I'm confident enough, I think yeah. you're probably lying to yourself. Yeah. Because yeah. everybody gets nervous. And it all depends on what? Like doing this live. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> We're <Yeah>. both. <laughs> right. Well, and even doing a live without sound. Which, <laughs> yeah, which we did before which this one. Which we did before this one. And it was In really case good. You missed it. But so, right. But I mean, the thing about this is, is there's specialists. Yeah. Right. I really like the reading the horse and communicating with horses. Yeah. And people too. You know, yeah, <laughs> but some people are better at at, at people and and the, I hate to say psychology, but to the the mind of the person, right? Yep. And Barbara's really great because she can she can get through to people and she's got great language and she's calm. Mm -hmm. She has a calm demeanor, not quite as up as as we sometimes yeah. are. And maybe I don't know about that, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> no. That that I think oh. she's calm because yeah. she's conveying she a nice level of confidence. And yeah. and so. It's a good course. She's put a lot of work into it. 
Yeah. And we're pretty excited about that. But so much of the time, people tell me, I'm not confident. Yeah. And, and if you say your horse isn't confident, well, check yourself first, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, I think it'll yeah, be a good sure. it'll be a good course. I'm excited about for sure. that. Yeah. And, and then I'm, the upcoming fair, which will be launching in April, has right. 2000, 2020. 2020. Yep. The 2020 fair. Yep. I can't believe we're doing this now. Right. Yeah. It's, it's our second year, which seems like a bit of a whirlwind. It's, it does. <laughs> yeah. But we have some awesome new presenters. I cannot wait. To, I'll be announcing them hopefully later this week. And great presentations coming in. I can't wait to share them with you. I mean, just really a group of people that are excellent teachers, truly care about the horse. They put the horse first and they want to share. And right. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah. So mark your calendars, April 6th and 7th. If you don't have a ticket, what are you waiting for? Uh, get to becauseofthehorse.net and you can um, get your tickets there. And I don't have the new presenters page up yet. I'm just waiting to get a few more submissions in and then I will have that all up and ready. And then let's see here. Oh, why don't you go into the YouTube channel? And, well, I was just going to say we'll release, we will be releasing sort of short clips or sometimes we call them snippet videos um, on our YouTube channel. It's doing good. It's, we're trying to get to 1800 subs now, which is great. Yeah. We're super excited about that. And and so the we'll slowly be releasing videos every Wednesday, and we'll also put different presenters in the mix as well, and so that you get some information that way. Um, and so we appreciate you guys watching YouTube channel and and subscribing and sharing and yeah. What I really like to and see where is they find us at uh, the Art of the Horsemen show, or you could just in Art of the Horsemen YouTube, yeah. yeah, yeah. And you could and or just type in our names. At this point, yeah, Jack and, and Paul, and it should, should it'll, it'll pop up, and that's great because we're up there on the search list. And then, um, you know, with with these videos that we're doing, you know, we really want comments. It's, it's oh, yeah. people don't want to comment, and it, maybe that comes back to confidence again, or putting out your, you know, people go, oh, I don't want to write because people might not like what I wrote or or whatever. Yeah. But it really helps us out if you do comment, and all the YouTube stuff that we do, it's a lot of work. It and is. we really don't get anything other than just we were putting out good information for the horse and for people. Um, you know, we like working on it, but it'd be nice to get get a few more comments. We're getting yeah. some. Yeah. But get a few more. That'd be great. Yeah. Or give a thumbs up or, you know, do what, you, what you're what you comfortable doing. Exactly. Um, or get out of your comfort zone and leave a comment. <laughs> do that. <laughs> and go. and then also, you know, if, you, if, if you're interested in any other, um, like, videos that you'd like to see or topics, you know, let us know. We can work on that. We have a lot yeah. of video that... That we need to work on, I have to work on video after this actually. But let us know um, if you have any, you know, certain thing you'd like to see, and we might just get it up there for you. We might just get it up on the on the YouTube channel. Yeah. So that's great. Yeah. So we're having a good time with that. Yeah. So did we nail everything on our list? I think we did. Yeah. I think we did. So that's thanks good. for joining in right. to our live our, Facebook yeah. whatever. <laughs> it's it takes a lot to do this because it's just and you know, we don't know what we're really gonna talk about. I mean, yeah, we like, actually jotted down. Like here's our, here's our. <laughs> you can't see it, but it, it's like not a lot. It's like a list of. Yeah, it doesn't do any good because it's blurry. There it is, sort of. We don't, and it's all just what comes to mind. I think we've always been that way. Yeah. Um, but we're a bit spontaneous. But anyway, we kind of flow along right. with our conversation, like we do with yeah. horses. We're a little exactly. We just kind of go with wherever it. It goes. Yeah, exactly. We have a plan, but then sometimes we veer away from that. And, yep. But we come back to it usually. Try. So that's good. We try yeah. to. But yeah. anyway, we really appreciate you all. Yeah, thank you all for being here. Yeah. And be sure to check out the YouTube channel and yeah, take it the from there. new fair. Yeah, so, for sure. All right. So, Bye, everyone. Thank you.